Imagine you moved to Mars, but you left your precious car on the Earth. Do you know how much you'll have to pay to move your car to the new house? Nearly 40 million US dollars. That's because only a space rocket can deliver it, and launching is very expensive. For example, Atlas V was launched into space for 160 million dollars. Meanwhile, there's almost no room left in the rocket for anything but the fuel compartment. There's very little space for cargo. Scientists have long contemplated how to replace missiles to make cargo delivery cheaper and space travel available not only to astronauts and millionaires, hi Jeff, but also to ordinary people like you and me. A solution exists, and it's a space elevator. A structure with a height over 20,000 miles from Earth that can carry you to orbit. Just hit the up button and go to the skies. Unless someone burns that button. Although it will undoubtedly be expensive to build such an elevator, it will provide an opportunity to significantly reduce the cost of launching things into outer space and make space travel a daily thing. In this video, you'll find out how to break the law of gravitation, what makes the moon better than the Earth, and how far can the space elevator take us. Orbiting literally means the rotation of one physical body around another. Thus, for a body to orbit the Earth, it must first overcome the planet's gravitational pull and go high enough, and then it has to keep rotating at the same speed as the Earth to avoid a fall. For this purpose, a rocket is equipped with an engine, the functioning of which is based on a combustion reaction. The fuel burns, the oxidizer supports the reaction, the gas is formed, the gas is released from the nozzle, the rocket takes off. However, hundreds of tons of fuel are needed. That accounts for the high launch cost. A space elevator could make it easier to overcome gravity, making the most expensive part unnecessary. It's simple. The elevator design comprises four parts. A base, a cable, a climber, and a counterweight. The base is where the cable is attached to the planet's surface and cargo is lifted, and where a vicious elevator operator awaits you. Just kidding. He'll be expecting you in the climber. The climber is the moving part of the elevator, thanks to which it won't be necessary to burn tons of fuel to take off from the Earth's surface. A space station or an asteroid can be a counterweight. In other words, any object heavy enough to hold the other end of the cable. Basically, the cable is the path along which the climber moves from the Earth to the sky, from the base to the space station. And the most significant difficulty lies in what material to use to make a cable. It must be strong enough to withstand strong winds, pressure, extreme temperatures, and radiation. But it must also be light enough to make an element over 20,000 miles long. No available material, such as graphene, Kevlar, or even the strongest modern carbon fiber polymers is strong enough to handle the load. While choosing the material, failure is not an option. After all, if the cable is torn apart, it will wrap around the Earth in a best-case scenario. In the worst case, it will forever remain in space, knocking down everything in its path. However, scientists provide solutions even to that issue. We can use the moon. But how? Zephyr Penoyer from the University of Cambridge in the UK and Emily Sanford from Columbia University in New York suggest placing the base, a space station, on the moon's surface, and then the cable has to be dangled towards the Earth. It's easier because the moon's gravity is six times weaker, and it rotates 30 times slower than the Earth. It means that the elevator structure will be affected by forces less intense than on the Earth. In addition, the moon is much closer to the Lagrange point. The Lagrange point is a location in space where the Earth's and the moon's gravitational forces balance each other. All objects sent there tend to stay put. A stabilizer for the whole structure could be placed there. But even 
even with a stabilizer, the cable from the moon to the Earth will be under a lot of pressure due to the tension. But Penoyer and Sanford claim that it's not necessary to extend the cable all the way to the Earth's surface. We can leave one end of it at a distance of 35,000 kilometers from the surface in geostationary orbit, thereby reducing the tension. It could then be possible to make a cable out of already existing materials, carbon fiber for example. However, the full implementation of those ideas would require additional tests and billions of dollars. Are there more well-thought-out solutions? This is Skyhook. The idea is a rotating satellite with a very long cable on one side and a bit smaller one with a counterweight on the other. Skyhook has no base and doesn't stand on the Earth's surface. That means that cargo needs to be transported to it. That's why, in order to attach cargo or satellite to the hook, the first step would be to reach it. Although we'll need a launch vehicle again to reach the bottom end of the hook and attach cargo, it's still cheaper than a standard launch. Moreover, the hook will not only lift cargo, it'll accelerate it. Rotating around its axis, the hook will literally pick up a spaceship flying on the verge of the planet's atmosphere, and then it'll throw it into space at tremendous speed just like a giant catapult. However, there is a chance that space debris might interfere. The European Space Agency has estimated that there are currently around 2 million objects of different sizes and diameters revolving around the Earth. And as all of them move at around 8 kilometers per second, even a small piece of debris can pose a serious threat. But even if we clean the orbit up beforehand, we won't be able to use Skyhook for too long anyway. If loaded on evenly, it will deorbit and go down. In order to rotate steadily, Skyhook needs not only to be launched, but also to catch fast-moving spaceships at high altitudes. Consequently, it'll slow them down and then let them go at lower altitudes. In that case, there will be no rotational energy loss. To set up an exchange like that, scientists suggest creating another hook on Mars. That'll make it possible for spaceships to fly between between the catapults and for us to colonize the red planet if we find a way to compensate for resource constraints. The thing is that there are no minerals and nuclear materials on Mars, plus a lack of solar power and wind power. We'll have to bring too many things from Earth. And so we may end up devastating one planet and never succeeding in colonizing the other. In that case, we'll need the resources of other planets. But how are we going to travel around the solar system? We could place sky hooks all around the solar system. For example, around Mercury, Venus, Earth, Mars, and a large asteroid belt. That'll simplify taking off and landing on these celestial bodies. Such a system of space catapults could possibly make resource extraction on the planets cost-effective. A price for one foot of a lifted load could drop from $3,500 to $25, and a well-organized system of space transportation could help supply everything needed for the process of colonization. That means that the Earth won't get devastated, and it'll be unnecessary to launch expensive and inefficient fuel rockets. And don't think it's just a fantasy. Tokyo-based global construction company Obayashi Corporation announced that it'll build the first space elevator ever by 2050 and Beijing will do it five years earlier. If it's really gonna happen so soon, it's time to start thinking, who's gonna clean up after us? Because when any person wishing to travel to Mars may do so, there'll be more debris in space. And you know what that means. We need a cleaning company with a powerful slogan. I have an option. Space Cleaning Company Void. Let it be clean even after the Big Bang. Do you have any other ideas?